Welcome back to a monthly spending overview video. I make these videos on a monthly basis just to keep myself accountable and just show you how I am thinking about my spending from an intentional way. If you're new here, hi, I'm Danielle. I make videos on my first gen experience and how I'm trying to navigate financial independence while still also living my life. So if that stuff interests you, please hit that subscribe button. Before we get into the June overview, let's talk about why I keep a close eye on my finances. So this isn't something that started in my unemployment period. This isn't something that started just because I was unemployed and needed to take a closer look. I've been tracking my spending since 2017 when I started my personal finance journey. But I think during my unemployment period, it was more important for me to take a closer look at where my money was going. But also because I got married during this unemployment period, this change in my financial situation, I was now merging it with another person. I thought, and we thought as a couple, we needed to think about how we were spending as a unit and how and like how our spending was working towards the larger goals that we have for our money. And so I think that's why I started to do this more close tracking of my spending because you know, after I reached the debt-free goal and certain milestones, I wasn't so specific in doing daily tracking. And so I think that's what you'll see when you see the systems that we use to manage our money. What are these systems? First system is Google Calendar. I have a separate money calendar that is just stating when bills are due, events that are coming up that might cost money to attend or might cost money because I'm giving a gift, as well as my own personal Google Sheet spreadsheet that I created that I you know, used to use to track every single dollar. I also now use Monarch Money in combination with my partner. So Monarch Money actually is something new that we implemented and we've been enjoying it. It helps us be able to avoid the manual piece of tracking our spending and just merges all of our accounts into this software. And we get to see overviews, of course. We get to label things the way that we like. But those are kind of the systems at play here when I go through these money spending overviews. You'll understand kind of how I use each thing. Okay. Let's get into June. We are in the month of June. And something to point out here is I started a job. Finally, after months of unemployment, I am on payroll. And so you'll see that our income is actually much higher than we had budget or expected, right? When we started this budget in the end of the month of May and beginning of June, I didn't think I would have a paycheck come in. And so that is what you see in the first row. I actually had my first paycheck in 11 months this month. And so that is listed there. Also, Monarch Money does more of income tracking than I was doing on my own. And it actually tracks how much interest you're getting paid from the various uh, savings accounts that you have. So just from interest that is paid to me from my high yield savings account, I have 131 of income. First gen money, we had a higher income month than usual than ever this month. Um, I think this is the most I've made on first gen money this year. $168. That is all of the money I made through like YouTube AdSense. And so I'll be making a separate video on how much YouTube paid me coming up, but this is exciting for me. I'm like, yay! Finally getting some uh, nice little paychecks there. And then other, we have our reselling as this category. So I finally sold our wedding uh, candles, hurricane candles to another couple that was getting married. Actually, I think they got married in June. So that's nice. I'm glad somebody else was able to use those. So our total income for this month was $16.98. The way that I usually break out my expenses on my own spreadsheet, I'll move over to my own spreadsheet, is I have monthly must pays. These are the categories that are consistent every month. 
But since we started using Monarch Money, I haven't really updated my own spreadsheet to reflect this new way that we're going about our budget, which is by creating a simple, uh, basic budget that anybody would normally. And so uh, we're still kind of using whatever Monarch has set up for us, and we'll see how we can combine my system with uh, just this budgeting system. Okay, now let's get into the spending. So for gifts and donations, we actually over um, underestimated what we were gonna spend. And this, um, the gifts really was that category where we overspent. And that was just, um, I think what threw us over was graduation gift, Father's Day, and um, yeah, those we had two categories this month. And so that's something that maybe we didn't estimate uh, appropriately. And looking at it deeper, I realized that there was an opportunity for me to buy flowers um, at a different store than where I ultimately ended up buying from. Uh, for auto and transportation, we actually stayed under. And I think part of the reason we did is because we did not get that oil change that we expected that we would get in June. Um, so that's why we didn't do the maintenance that month. Our gas um, was lower than we anticipated. And I think another piece here was public transportation. I ended up shifting a few of the events that I had to go into the city for to another date that fell in July. And so that's why that is lower than what I had anticipated. Housing stayed the same. We pay $300 a month to our landlord, AKA my mother-in-law, to be able to live in the basement, which is unheard of, I know, um, and we are very fortunate for that. Utilities, uh, phone, we actually got a rebate or a refund is really what it is for our usage of Google Fi when we were in Japan. So they finally returned that to us in the month of June. And so that's why this is less than what we normally pay for our phone subscriptions. But I am looking at how to reduce my portion of the phone, the phone bill. So I'm looking at cheaper options. And then subscriptions stayed at what they were supposed to be food and dining. So something that I really think is important to talk about when it comes to personal finance and the things, spending money where you value, I think we did a really good job this month in our money date to look at our eating out experiences and see, we overspent on groceries, but not too drastically, so we won't go into it. But I think for our eating out category, we realized that there were certain times we we did takeout that wasn't really like an experience but there were other eating out experiences where it was like celebrating my new job um going out to eat for my sister's graduation and certain things like that where we're like we're okay and actually happy to spend money on these eating out experiences versus you know going to chipotle to bring in a Chipotle bowl and eat it at home while we're watching something. And so I think the way we're thinking about eating out is like, how do we minimize those like smaller things like going to get Chipotle and all that stuff and make sure we're using our funds to prioritize those like meetings with friends and like getting to do something as a group. So I think that's something to think about, um, something that we took a closer look at, like where do we spend money in places that we value? And we value those experiences with other people when we're eating out. Travel and lifestyle. So something that I wasn't expecting to spend money on, and you'll see this in the first category here, uh, was entertainment and recreation. So I actually, and I'll open this up. I didn't realize that tickets for Sabrina Carpenter's show were gonna go on sale in the month of June. And so when I did, I signed up for pre-sale and I bought tickets. So I will be going to a Sabrina Carpenter concert in September and I needed to get my tickets now because I do not like to buy tickets, resold tickets, because I feel like people are trying to make a profit out of me and they really are. And so when I get, when I get the opportunity to do a pre-sale, and get in the queue and all that stuff, I make sure I take that opportunity. And I think it's also already sold out, so I had to get tickets, I just had to. Um, so that is probably the one area we went over that uh, 
we were not anticipating going over. Um, nothing for pets because for Charlotte, I had bought her food in the month of May and it was gonna be enough for two months. So we're good there. Um, personal, we've been going back and forth of like, where does tailoring fit into this budget category? And we decided that it's a miscellaneous lifestyle category. The $38 that I was not anticipating spending, I think could have fall into the shopping category. As you'll see here, I had more budgeted into the shopping than I did for personal miscellaneous, but it is a lifestyle thing. I didn't need to get those pants tailored, but I did want to get them fitted to me. And so that's the $38 that we're seeing here that we debated putting in clothing, but ultimately decided it should stay in personal. So shopping. I had budgeted $200 just for new clothes. My goal really was to stick to $100, but I told myself like, let me just anticipate that things might come up. And so I said $200 to buy myself new clothes for the new job that I was starting. Lifestyle inflation, right? You know, like you, you get a new job, you need new outfits, right? Luckily, we stayed way under that at $78, and that was all just like me buying clothes this month. Miscellaneous shopping, again, this falls under anything that is, all of this I, I believe is Amazon purchases. And so um, let's see specifically what they were, because I know we put notes so that we remember what they were. Okay, so they're wipes and protein powder, so technically like household items. And then we had, um, Ari bought some stuff for sleep apnea that he's been struggling with to um, help him sleep better. So that's what that is. And then my sister reimbursed me for um, a purchase I made for her. And so that's what fell under miscellaneous shopping, even though technically I think it would fall under household items since wipes and protein powder are not really fun shopping items. So my family stuff, um, again, I, I ended up putting up Netflix and the internet that I pay under the bills and just categorize that as family stuff because I have been just listing it as my personal bills, my personal subscriptions, but they're actually for my family members. And then a miscellaneous was a $15 Venmo or Apple Pay actually to my little sister who needed gas money. So, you know, sometimes you just gotta send the little sister a little something so she can get to her part-time job. Health and wellness, this was a category where we definitely overspent and the big chunk of it came from fitness. So that is Ari's just membership dues for his um, hockey group. Okay, and I also signed up for a 5K that I'm gonna be doing with my friends in September. So that goes under fitness. It could also go under entertainment, but really it's fitness because even though I'm socializing at this 5K, it's not entertainment. It's part of like the overall fitness um, category. So that is that I had budgeted $40 to get my nails done and I had a gift card, so not anything there. Financial, I got thrown an annual fee for my credit card and so that is like that big chunk here and then that recurring charge I get for not having a certain balance or a certain direct deposit going into an account. And so a to-do for us, which you'll see on my spreadsheet, is for me to investigate how to keep, um, how to avoid those fees, both in my personal, but as you'll see in first gen money as well. Other, nothing there to discuss. Uh, first gen money, very expensive month here, um, mostly because I bought a mic and I also had to pay for like the annual business New Jersey standing thing. So I had to pay for it this year, but also last year because I guess I didn't pay for it. I feel like I'm a really bad business owner. And it, at this point, we'll discuss more about this, but I'm just like, I don't know if I'm technically a business. So total expenses came to 35, um, 11. And obviously that was a lot more than what we made this month, but it's because I only started working the last three days of the month. And so we're excited. We are gonna try this again because my camera just died and it looks like maybe in July we might have an 
big expense, um, but hopefully not. So what are some thoughts for June? In doing our money date, I think we found that unsurprisingly, uh, when you don't travel or you don't have any trips planned, you spend less money. So it was nice to be home. It was nice to not have to travel and therefore, you know, see our expenses be kind of like average of what they would be if we had no trips. And so that just proves that when we're home, we spend less. Another thing that we saw in June was making more meals at home that we enjoyed eating. So we still ate out, but we ate out takeout less than we normally do, right? And so what I mean by this is we were doing less of those like Chipotle runs or, you know, little pizzas here and there because we were actually enjoying the meals that we were eating at home. And so we ate out when it was more related to an experience. So how can we continue to find recipes that we love, that we wanna try, that make us excited to have food here instead of getting takeout elsewhere? Taking this into like what we're thinking about for the month of July is obviously my first month with a full paycheck. I will be getting two paychecks. I will be a full-time employee the whole month of July if everything proceeds, you know, as it should. Um, so that's exciting, seeing our income double and just to have income, more income than we've had in the last 11 months is something exciting and something we're looking forward to. Another thing that um, comes up is the travel component. I will be traveling at the end of the month for work. Now I'm doing two days for work related stuff, but then I'm taking a few days of my personal time. So like there will be that traveling component there. And so how, thinking about how well the month of June went, how can we um, make sure that July just doesn't go off the rails because we have this work trip slash personal trip that I'm taking. Um, and we're also camping with our friends. It's a low, camping is low cost, right? We've already paid for the accommodation and, um, you know, we'll just have to buy food like groceries to make while we're camping. But otherwise it's a very low cost trip, but still it's traveling. So how do we think about that going from a great month of low to no travel in June to now we have two trips that we have to think about and make sure that our expenses don't just like dramatically increase. Another piece too that we talked about for expenses that are coming up in July, we had to have our oil change in June, but we didn't. So that got, got rolled over to July and now we're up for a inspection and getting the, um, I don't know, whatever you, the sticker you get in your car. So that's gonna cost money. Those are expenses that are just like maintenance, auto, things that just come up with life, right? If you own a car. And then another piece too is makeup. I am, I wear minimal at least because I get to work from home. So I wear minimal makeup and I no longer feel the need to like wear a full face of makeup to record a YouTube video. So when I say I need to buy makeup, I mean, the few pieces of makeup that I have are now running low. And so I will need to restock on that. But I am going to look into what there is available of like what I already use and know and like with our um, Saks $50 credit that we get simply for having the Amex credit card. And so those are just some things that are coming up in July. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling really good about this monthly spending overview. It's it's a good one, right? It's one where it's like, yes, there is income. Finally, you know, things are looking up. I also wanted to talk about and share kind of my screen to show you my own personal spreadsheet, some of the questions that we ask ourselves ahead of the month, right? And we changed up one of the three questions that we usually ask, but one question is what is going to impact our, you know, overspending uh, and our stop overspending goals. And so we have that work trip, but also um, camping trip. You know, our gas might be higher this month. 
Where do we wanna challenge our spending this month? Again, we wanna be able to see how much of the paycheck that I will be getting in the month of July, we can actually put towards saving for our goals. We haven't been able to save, so that's something we're looking ahead to. And then the third question is one that we changed from the previous months, and so, we're asking now ourselves, what from the previous month can we do differently? In this case, for Ari, it's really tracking how many jobs he's applying to. And for me, it's understanding like what's going on with my spending and for first gen money. Like why am I spending what I'm spending on something that isn't really yet generating any income? And what is the goal there? So that's what we use this spreadsheet for. We also have like action items for like each other and so this is a good place to put that every time we're doing our monthly overviews but yeah that is all i have for today i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it gave you a glimpse and maybe gave you some ideas of how you can look into your spending whether you are part of a couple or not it is important that you're tracking your your spending because if you don't get a hold of where your money is going there's no way to make any changes for the better and really you'll just feel like you're stuck in um, the same place so i've always found it as a fun little exercise end of the week activity